Hello, wonderful people. God bless you and welcome, welcome, welcome. Today I want to talk about something extremely important. I want to talk about mental illness, mental health, and mental health care. I'm going to start by going over a summary of the DSM-5, the Diagnostic Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. The DSM-5 is used by mental health clinicians to diagnose and classify mental disorders. It provides standardized criteria for conditions which aids in clinical diagnosing and it facilitates research on the prevalence and treatment effectiveness. In the United States, mental health conditions are highly prevalent. Approximately 21% of adults experience a diagnosable mental illness each year. Anxiety disorders are among the most common, affecting approximately 19% of adults annually, while major depressive disorders impact around 8%. More severe conditions such as bipolar affect about 2% of adults, while schizophrenia affects less than 1%. These statistics are from the National Institute of Mental Health and the National Alliance on Mental Illness. The DSM-5 has been crucial for improving mental health care by standardizing diagnosis and encouraging a broader understanding of mental health conditions. However, challenges remain, including the need for better access to treatment. For instance, only about half of those with mental health conditions in the U.S. receive appropriate treatment. Not to mention there are a number of mental illnesses that are either resistant to treatment or there is no effective treatments whatsoever. About one in six U.S. youths aged six to 17 experience a mental health disorder each year. 50% of all lifetime mental illness begins by age 14 and 75% by age 24. Suicide is the second leading cause of death among people aged 10 to 14. All right, let's get into it. The DSM-5, the Diagnostic Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. The five refers to the fifth and latest edition of this manual published in 2013 by the American Psychiatric Association. The DSM-6 is due out sometime between now and 2028. So essentially, the DSM-5 is a standardized guide that clinicians use to diagnose mental health conditions. It categorizes hundreds of disorders like depression, anxiety, and schizophrenia with detailed criteria to help identify symptoms, assess severity, and provide consistent care across different settings. The DSM-5 also plays a big role in research and treatment, but it's important to remember that the DSM is a guide and it's not a definitive answer. Mental health is complex and individuals' experiences can't always be fully captured by a book or a manual. Okay, now that we've got the basics of the DSM-5, I wanted to go over more specific mental health disorders. I've put them into 19 different categories and I'm gonna go over them right now. But one thing I wanted to mention first is even as a mental health counselor myself, having studied it extensively, I've tried to apply the diagnosing to myself and I can't even give myself a precise diagnosis because I see myself in several of these different categories. All right, let's get into it. Here are the 19 different mental health disorder categories. The first one is neurodevelopmental disorders. This includes disorders that begin in early development, often before grade school, impacting personal, social, academic, and occupational functioning. Examples include 
autistic spectrum disorder, ADHD, intellectual disabilities, and communication disorders. I personally have been diagnosed with ADHD in the past, and I have a lot to say about that particular diagnosis, so I will be doing an entire video just about ADHD. All right, category two, schizophrenia spectrum and other psychotic disorders. These are characterized by delusions, hallucinations, disorganized thinking, abnormal motor behavior, and negative symptoms like reduced emotional expressions. These include schizophrenia, schizoaffective disorders, and psychotic disorders. Category three, bipolar and related disorders. These involve episodes of mania, which is an extreme high energy and mood, and depression with symptoms ranging from hypomanic episodes to severe manic episodes. So these include bipolar one disorder and bipolar two disorder. Category four, depressive disorders. These are marked by persistent sadness, emptiness, or irritability that affects daily functioning. These include a variety of forms and durations of depressive states. Some examples are major depressive disorder, persistent depressive disorder, and disruptive mood dysregulation disorder. Moving on, category five, anxiety disorders. These involve excessive fear, anxiety, or avoidant behavior, and these affect social or occupational functioning. Some examples include generalized anxiety disorder, social anxiety disorder, panic disorder, and specific phobias. Category six, obsessive compulsive and related disorders. These are characterized by intrusive thoughts, obsessions, and repetitive behaviors or mental acts, the compulsions, that are performed to reduce your anxiety. Some examples include OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, body dysmorphic disorder, and hoarding disorder. Category seven, trauma and stressor related disorders. These arise after exposure to a traumatic event or stressful events, leading to emotional behavior or psychological distress. A few examples are PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, and acute stress disorder and adjustment disorder. Category eight, disassociative diet disorders. These involve disruptions in identity, memory, or consciousness, often as a defense mechanism against trauma. Examples include disassociative identity disorder, disassociative amnesia, or depersonalization, derealization disorder. Moving on, category nine, somatic symptoms and related disorders. These are characterized by physical symptoms causing significant distress or impairment, often without a medical cause. Examples include somatic symptom disorder, illness anxiety disorder, or conversion disorder. Category 10, feeding and eating disorders. These involve persistent disturbances in eating behavior that impair health or functioning. Examples include anorexia nervosa, bulimia nervosa, and binge eating disorder. Category 11, elimination disorders, usually diagnosed in childhood related to inappropriate elimination of urine or feces. Moving on, category 12, sleep-wake disorders. These affect sleep quality, timing or duration, impacting daytime functioning. Examples include insomnia disorder, narcolepsy, sleep apnea, and circadian rhythm sleep disorders. Next, category 13, sexual dysfunction. This involves difficulties with sexual response or pleasure that causes distress. Examples include erectile dysfunction, 
female orgasmic disorder, and premature ejaculation. Category 14, gender dysphoria. Distress associated with a mismatch between one gender identity and assigned sex at birth. Category 15, disruptive impulse control and conduct disorders. These involve challenges in emotional and behavioral self-control, often resulting in aggression or rule breaking. Examples include oppositional, defiant disorder, conduct disorder, and intermittent explosive disorder. Category 16, substance related and addiction disorders. These encompass disorders related to the misuse of substances and behavioral addictions. Examples include alcohol use disorder, opiate use disorder, and gambling disorder. Category 17, neurocognitive disorders. These affect cognitive functions like memory, language, and attention usually due to a brain injury or illness. Examples include delirium, major and mild neurocognitive disorders such as Alzheimer's disease. Category 18, personality disorders. These are when enduring patterns of behavior, cognition, and inner experiences that deviate from cultural expectations causing impairment or distress. Examples include personality, borderline personality disorder, antisocial personality disorder, and narcissistic personality disorder. I already did a whole three-hour documentary on narcissistic personality disorder. Check that out if you're interested. And finally, the last category, category 19, paraphilic disorders. These involve atypical sexual interests that cause distress or harms to oneself or others. These include pedophilic disorder, voyeuristic disorder, and exhibitionist disorder. So there you have it. There are the 19 different categories of mental illness. And it's important to remember that mental health is complex and very individualized. So diagnoses are often combined with professional judgment and personalized treatment approaches. And there's also a concept of comorbidity, which means you could have more than one disorder at a time and they all affect and complicate each other. So there you have it. There's a brief overview of the DSM-5, the Diagnostic Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. I'm going to be doing a ton more videos on this subject, um, probably a specific video for each disorder or each disorder category. I'm going to talk a lot more in depth about my own personal experience and my own personal mental illness struggles. And my hope is that you learn and you find out something about yourself and that if you recognize that you have any type of any of these arrangements of disorders that you seek help, and it is my hope that the, 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 the treatment that you end up receiving is effective and it improves your life. That's the goal here is for you to live a happy and healthy life life. So with that, I say God bless you. Thank you so much. If you have anything you'd like to say, please leave it in the comments. God bless you. Have a great day.